Hey there, this is Seth, and I want to talk to you today about a really cool new land valuation technique that I just learned about. And this technique was actually shown to me by somebody in the RE Tips Reform. His name is Carl James. So just full disclosure, this is not my idea. I did not come up with this. This is something he just shared with everybody, and I thought it was really cool and really valuable. And so with his permission, I just wanted to make this video and make it as easy as I can for you to follow along so you can see how he does it and... Uh, how a lot of us are doing it now. So in this particular example, we're going to just pretend that we found a lead in Lake Las Vegas, which is in the Henderson, Nevada area. And we're basically just gonna try to find similar comparable sales and listings in the area. So we can use that data to gauge what the approximate market value is of this particular property. All we'd have to do is go right here to the main page of Redfin, and we're gonna type in you know, Lake Las Vegas. And usually you're going to see this kind of thing that will show up in their system. So you click on that and then it's going to bring you to a page that looks like this. You're going to see, you know, this map with the outline of, uh, of the area. And if you want to, you can remove that outline um, or you can keep it there, whatever you want to do. And the first thing you see is all of these little icons and push pins that are sitting in the map. And these are not necessarily all vacant land properties. A lot of these are, you know, houses, apartments, you know, multifamily properties, that kind of thing. So to start narrowing this down, we're going to go up here to the filters button. And we're going to uncheck all of these properties that are not classified as land. So once everything is unselected other than land, we're also going to go down here and click on every possible item to include. And we're going to go back a full three years. And the reason we're doing this is because when it comes to vacant land, there's usually not a lot of comparable data out there. And that's part of what, what makes it so difficult to value as opposed to things like houses where there's tons of comps available. So we're going to try to grab as much data as we possibly can. And then once we've got that done, we're going to go here and click on update search. And now, as you can see, there's a lot fewer of these things. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to this plus and minus button in the bottom and we're going to zoom in. And by the way, if you're not seeing an actual satellite map like I am here, you can adjust that with this layers button right there. So you can you know, either do a street map or satellite map or even a hybrid if you want to. Uh, but anyway, we're going to keep zooming in. And as you can see, it kind of starts to show us the parcel lines, which is really helpful. And if you happen to know the exact location of the specific property you're looking at, that can also be helpful just because you can sort of gauge how close that property is to all these other ones listed here. And when you click on these things, like just this one, for example, it actually gives a lot of great information. And you can find that by going up here where it says more. And it tells us several things here. Um, probably most importantly, it says the last sold price, which is 195,000. And it also shows us the date that it was sold right there. Um, it shows the lot size. If you scroll down, you can obviously see a bunch of pictures here. And you can see the MLS listing number, if that happens to be of use to you in your situation. You can see a lot of property details here. And another really helpful uh, item down here is this property history where it shows the date that it was actually listed and what it was listed for. And then if and when the price ever changed and what price it actually sold for and when it sold. In a lot of cases, you know, there's going to be several pieces of information here. And then in some cases, you're not going to see hardly inf any information here. It'll just be the list price and that's it because price hasn't been lowered yet or it hasn't sold. So... Depending on the property, you may or may not find a lot of helpful info here, but it's still worth clicking on a few um, of those push pins in the area and just checking it out and seeing what you can see. So then we're going to go back down here. The cool thing about Redfin is you can scroll down to the bottom and you can download all of this information in the form of an Excel file. So we're going to do that. And the reason this is important is because we can then take this data and organize it and add some calculations and it will add a lot more clarity in terms of what these you know, listing and sale prices actually mean for our property, the one that we're looking at. So if I go ahead and open up this Excel file, uh, it's going to look something like this. And this is, you know, kind of probably looks a little bit confusing, but the reason it looks a little bit confusing is because we have to eliminate a lot of this information in order to make it make sense. So the items that I'm going to eliminate are these right here. And basically, I just want to have a few key items left when I'm done with this, particularly the address, list price, you know, things like beds and baths. That doesn't even... I mean, obviously vacant land does not have that. So we can just go ahead and delete it. 
these things we can delete and I can delete this and then delete all of these items and now we're gonna have something that looks like this and then one more thing if you scroll down here you'll notice that you'll see this message where it says MLS rules require that you be registered blah 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 that's kind of a problem for these ones because the list price is a very important number as I'm gonna explain in just a minute so when you see these we're just gonna highlight all of them and delete them because they're really of no use to us so we're gonna delete those okay so once we get down to this point we're actually going to insert two new columns into this spreadsheet so we're gonna insert one right there and then another one right next to it and we're gonna call this first column acres and then the second one we're gonna call dollars per acre like that and in this first column we're gonna enter a little formula which I actually have copied and pasted here and that specific formula is equal sign C2 and then divided by 43560 and what exactly does that mean well I'll just explain to you really quickly what this is saying is that right here where it says lot size these numbers that you see here are actually square feet so for example this first property is 5662 square feet in size it doesn't tell us the acres and on this formula here where it says 43560 the reason it says that is because one acre is the exact same thing as 43,560 square feet. So the math equation is basically just saying whatever this is, we're going to convert that into acres. And we do that by taking, you know, 5,662 square feet divided by 43,560, which gives us, in this case, 0.129982 acres. So hopefully that's not too terribly confusing, but. All you got to do is put that formula in there. Um, and by the way, I actually have that exact formula on the blog post. If you just scroll down or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link below and go to the blog post and you can just copy and paste this yourself. So don't worry about trying to remember all the numbers, just copy and paste. But once you have that in there, you'll notice in the lower right hand corner of this cell, you see this little uh, kind of like a, a tiny square. And all you have to do is click on that and then hold and drag it all the way down and what that's going to do is it's going to take that exact same formula and then copy and paste it into all the cells below so now for each one of these properties we have the exact calculation of how many you know technical acres that is when it converts it from from uh, square feet that's the first part of the of the process and then now going over here to the next column we're going to uh, copy and paste another formula and by the way this is also on the blog post so feel free to go check that out you can go ahead and copy and paste it yourself it's very easy and so once you have that formula we're gonna copy and paste it right here and just to explain what this formula means it's kind of confusing what this is saying is that if there is a recent sale price over here in this column it's going to take that number and divide it by the acres number to show us how many dollars per acre the property sold for and if you know for example in this first case when this uh, cell is blank because obviously it hasn't sold and it's still active listing in those cases it's going to revert over to where it just shows a list price and obviously you know an actual recent sale price is going to be a much more reliable number to go by because that's literally what it sold for in the recent past it's just a lot harder to dispute that that is the actual value for that property because that's what it literally sold for so you know th those numbers are a lot more reliable but since there's usually not enough data to go by it's going to also just pull in the list prices and use those as well which may certainly be less reliable but I certainly would not call those numbers worthless because for all intents and purposes that's who your actual competition is if and when you ever try to list a property in this market and those numbers do kind of count for something so once you have that uh, formula in there just do the same function where you click and hold on this and drag it all the way down and then that tells you what uh, the amounts are for each one of those. And then if you highlight this column and click on the dollar sign, it'll just sort of convert these numbers to dollars for you, which should make it a little bit easier to read. And then we're going to get rid of those decimal points. One last step you can go through if you want to um, is to basically just take all of these numbers and average them out. And I wouldn't say that this number means anything definitive because you really have to be looking at the specific property you're, you're looking at 
and how that compares in contrast to all of these. Because, for example, you know, this one here at the top could be right on the lake, and this one here could be right next to a landfill out in the middle of nowhere, you know. I mean, it's probably not, but, I mean, obviously every lot is unique and has certain characteristics that will make it more or less valuable. So, again, this is not like a rock-solid concrete number in terms of what your property is worth. It's really just intended to give you more of a, you know, ballpark idea of what you're working with and what this particular market happens to value land at. So, if you do want to go to, through this last step and put an average on it, you can just enter in, you know, equal sign and then average in all caps and then simply highlight all of these numbers and then put uh, parentheses on it and then there you go. Again, this is the formula I'm using if you take a look up there. And again, I am going to have this formula posted in the actual blog post. So if you, you know, can't remember or you need to just copy and paste it, feel free to do that and that will work as well. But really this right here is the average dollar per acre of all of these properties, which includes both uh, sale prices and list prices. So um, as always, this is not a black and white type thing. It's something where you really have to look at the specific unique characteristics of the property you're dealing with in comparison to all these other ones. But if you just completely in the dark and you have absolutely no idea where to start and you just don't understand the market in which you're working, this can be a very, very, very helpful exercise to go through just to start educating yourself and start using some actual realistic data to drive your decisions. So with that said, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this little tutorial helpful and hopefully I will see you again soon.